You're watching the ABC 17 Sports Zone Special Game Day in Arizona, presented by these fine sponsors. everyone it is game day in Arizona I am ABC 17 sports director Natalie Jones alongside Chanel Porter a little under eight hours from now about eight hours Chiefs Eagles gonna be kicking off here at State Farm Stadium Chanel feels like we've been talking 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 for weeks it's really just been days happy kickoff is finally here I don't know about you I think we're all agreeing on that one well Chiefs Kingdom the players and of course we have never been so ready for something to finally get started Casey is looking for its second Super Bowl title in four seasons. They'll have a tall task though against the AFC champ, the well-rounded Eagles tonight. Yes, you know, you know, as you can see, not a lot of people here yet. This parking lot actually completely empty, but I'm expecting people to start filling in for a great matchup. Like you mentioned, you know, Chiefs Kingdom travels. This was probably the hottest ticket in the country this weekend. So expecting a lot of people to be here, but definitely excited for kickoff. There's a lot of stuff to do, concert stages. So try to get that stress out before this big game starts. I'll give you one less thing to stress about. The Chiefs appear to be all systems go for today's game. KC had not one single player on the final injury report yesterday as everyone was full participation in Friday's practice. Cornerback Legarius Sneed was the only Chief limited on Thursday after a concussion in the AFC title game, but it looks like he is all ready to go. The Eagles injury report is also a short one with only one player on the list in wide receiver Britton Covey listed as questionable with a hamstring injury. This lead up to this game has been all talk about the big names. Obviously, you hear about Jalen Hurts, Patrick Mahomes, A.J. Brown, Travis Kelsey, Hassan Reddick, all those guys in reasonably so right but what about those guys in the trenches who never get the love that they definitely deserve this is going to be a game battled in the trenches so start learning those names now if you don't already know them Maddie, look he loved jason kelsey he has exceeded everyone's expectations one of the best centers in the league this year winning up front might just mean winning super bowl 57. if something doesn't happen the game is still four quarters and you got to play uh, the whole game. Kansas City is matching up with what's been labeled the best offensive line in football. That line is led by center Jason Kelsey, and it's hard to find a weak link in it. Well, the, sh the show runs through the quarterback. You know, I'm, I, I do my part, and but I'm an auxiliary piece to the main guy. The Chiefs defense will need to attack early and often, much like they did in the AFC championship game. Kansas City got to Bengals quarterback Joe Burrow five times in that title game, throwing him really completely out of rhythm. One of the best. He had 15 and a half of the regular season, but oddly had never had a postseason sack until a moment ago. I think this we're not done yet. Uh, we still got a ways to go. We got one more game to play, and um, if we don't come out and be successful against this team, then it's all wasted. However, the effort from the offensive line is just as, if not more, important tonight. You know, I think we've you know poured it in this this whole week and this whole season, really. Uh, you know, taking a week at a time and trying to really absorb the game plan and understand our, the opponent we're going against. And um, you know, when it comes down to it, it's all about you know 11 men on offense executing one play at a time. When you look back to Kansas City's loss in Super Bowl 55, you can definitely say the Chiefs have one of the most improved offensive lines. That group has allowed pressure on less than 14 percent of. Patrick Mahomes' dropbacks this season, a stat that's even more important with Mahomes' high ankle sprain that he continues to rehab. I don't think you'll know exactly until you get to game day. Um, I'm definitely in a better spot. Uh, I mean, I, I definitely can move around better than I, I was moving last week or two weeks ago. And so uh, it's just trying to continue to get the treatment and the rehab um, and get to as close as I can to 100%. Four members of the Eagles front finished with at least 11 sacks this season. And every single one of them has recorded a sack and a tackle for loss in each game of their playoff run this year. You always look, watch the games and think of things you could have done better, opportunities we lost. Um, so it's it's a constant you know process trying to improve and grow together and um, you know we're still doing that and uh, yeah so it's just it keeps on going. It'll be a fist fight up front in a long four quarters for those involved. Definitely going to be a game fought in the trenches, even with a fully healthy Patrick Mahomes, fully healthy Jalen Hurts. This is always going to be one to watch on who can stop the opposing defensive line. Going to be a very long night, you know.
Well, Hurts and Mahomes obviously still major key factors in this ball game, both with standout seasons. Mahomes, as the league MVP, enters the year with everyone questioning what he would be able to do without Tyreek Hill. Instead, Mahomes set a career high in passing yards, 5,250, a completion rate of over 67%, and marked his first season throwing 40-plus touchdowns since 2018. Hertz's numbers definitely were affected by missing those two weeks with an injury, but here's how they compare. Throwing for over 3,700 yards, second on the team in rushing yards, and leading his team in rushing scores with 13. Today marks the first time two black quarterbacks have gone head-to-head -head in the big game, something that both Mahomes and Hertz are soaking in. It's been way long overdue. Um, you know, you've seen a lot of quarterbacks that haven't had this opportunity that we have had, and it took uh, the quarterbacks before us to pave the way. And so uh, for us to be in this moment on this stage and be able to show where we've come as a, as a league, um, this would be just the start of it, just the beginning of it. And we want to make sure that we set the stage for future generations to come. To be a part of this history, it's a blessing, you know, and I think to be able to um, be of influence and kind of give, give the next generation a quarterback something to believe in, something to look forward to, I think that's, that's nice too. Well, Kansas City is going to have to watch the run, to say the least, in this game. Philadelphia has run all over mostly pretty much every team that they've met this season, including against some of the top run defenses in the country. Philly has won 20 straight games when entering the fourth quarter with a lead, and there is a reason why they grind it out on the ground and wind that clock down. On the Chiefs' sideline, rookie Isaiah Pacheco will be in his first Super Bowl this season. He beat both Clyde Edwards-Alaire and veteran Jarek McKinnon for a role this season. He's becoming a pretty dynamic weapon for KC if he can find a way around this Eagles run defense. He could be a pretty big effect in this game today. It's how we handle it now. And, and, and if we eliminate distractions and focus on the, the little things, um, we'll be at our high and at our best to compete. A lot of people, um, you know, wish they could be in these, this position right now. And as a, for me, um, I'm in this position and I'll have to take advantage of it. And, and not only that, um, you know, the, for the kids that's watching and, and down there home, you know, you could, you could do it and you can make your dreams come true. Lots of big things to watch, including this guy. Andy Reid will look to capture another Super Bowl trophy with the Chiefs, but this time against the team that he spent leading for more than a decade. I'll have more on that story coming up next. Welcome back. Chanel Andy Reid is, is one of the most successful coaches in NFL history. Over 24 years with both the Chiefs and the Eagles, he became the first coach in league history to post 100 wins with two different franchises. Quite a career so far. Well, today marks Reid's fourth appearance in the NFL's biggest game, and he'll be gunning for his second Lombardi trophy while playing against his old team. We've learned some groundbreaking stuff this week about Andy Reid from what makes a good burger. Uh, it's got to have a good bun. Let's start there, right? And then fresh meat. And then you put anything else on it other than mustard and you're good. And while we all survive off coffee, Reid doesn't need it. I just get up and go. I, I'm, I got endless energy for a chubby guy. But in all seriousness, this season, Reid became the first head coach in league history to win 10 playoff games with two different franchises. And ironically, they both ended up in the big game. I had 14 great years there. I loved every minute of it. Things were surreal for Reed when he walked into opening night to see so many familiar faces. It was great to see the, the kids that we had drafted uh, that are now these veteran players, all pro players. With great success in both cities, Reed said he's looking forward to the two going head to head. They're passionate. They love football. I can't wait till uh, Kansas City and Philly clash. It's going to be it's going to be awesome, man. But his guys in KC are just happy that during the matchup, Reed is on their sideline. Why am I always open? I say it all the time. Andy Reed, baby. Big Red. He uh, he can he can dial some stuff up at the right time. Coach Reed is you know a, a, a one of a kind uh, talent when it comes to you know what he does offensively. So every week there's, you know, some wrinkle or some trick play that we got. While there's been all love from both sides for Big Red, now he's only focused on game time. I had a chance to give him a hug last night, and, and, and now we go our separate ways and we get ready to play.
Well, if the Chiefs do manage to come out on top tonight, Reed could get his third Super Bowl ring, his last with KC back in 2020, and his first as an assistant coach with the Packers in 1997. Another fun Super Bowl connection comes from Chief Center Creed Humphrey. Humphrey gets to play in a Super Bowl, sending snaps to his current QB, Patrick Mahomes, against his former QB, Jalen Hurts. Humphrey and Hertz were teammates at Oklahoma and were both key parts of the 2019 Sooners team that won the Big 12 championship. Well, Natalie, there's going to be a lot of first year players on the field for Super Bowl 57, especially when it comes to the Chiefs sideline. Yeah, Chanel, quite a few of them. Five rookie DBs, a rookie wide receiver, a rookie running back, really you name it, a lot of rookies like you mentioned on this team. It's actually something that fans were a bit weary about coming into the season. How would this play out? You love to have young talent, but they just had a lot of it at one time. And boy, did they come out to play this season. This rookie class has stepped up in some of the biggest moments of these playoffs. First year corners, Jalen Watson and Joshua Williams, both interceptions in the AFC title game. George Karlaftis finished with a sack and really the list goes on. I talked to quite a few of these rookies this week leading up to this game and they say they came together almost immediately from joining the Chiefs. I think these guys uh, do such a good job at just staying in the moment. I always say I have it tattooed on me be in the moment um, and just taking things one day at a time. Um, not getting too over ourselves, not saying go, oh, yeah, we're the five rookie DBs who made it. Like, nah, we still have a game to do. We still have a job to do. A lot of expectations on us early, knowing that we needed people to fill roles immediately. So. Once we once we realized that, I guess we, we started to get closer. We started to hang out with, with each other a little bit more. You know, in order for our team to be successful, we'd have to play a big role. You know, and we filled the we had to fill the those uh, those shoes. You know, within the team. So, uh, you know, our coaches helped us out a lot. Our other teammates, the veteran guys. You know, and uh, just trying to get better every single day, having each other's backs. With the big game finally here, crowds of fans are anticipating out at restaurants cheering on the Chiefs. ABC 17's Joshua Blount joins us live from Ernie's Cafe and Steakhouse in downtown Columbia. Josh, lots of fans there ready to go, right? Yes, you know, fans are packed inside of Ernie's right now, but I was able to actually snag one Chief fan. Um, I'm here standing with uh, Stacy Hoover, who's been a Chief fan for a while. Uh, good morning, Stacy. How are you doing? I'm good morning. I'm doing well. That's great. So, can you just tell me, like, how long have you been a Chiefs fan exactly, and what made you become one? Years and years. I've been born and raised here in Columbia, Missouri, and I've loved the Chiefs forever. <laughs> now, um, you know, of course, Eagles, Chiefs. Who are you? Who are you predicting to win? Absolutely, the Chiefs. Why is that? I <laughs> when, when you're a big fan, that's that's what who you're gonna go with. Just saying. I know the Kelseys are gonna be against each other, but that's cool. <laughs> Mama's gonna be be a winner either way. <laughs> I like to hear that. Now, what is your favorite part about the Super Bowl exactly? Um, the intensity of it. I mean, last week's game was so so intense, and it, it was so great. But, I, I, I mean, either way it goes, they, they, they play hard. Um, Kelsey, Mahomes, they, they make a great team. They, they all make a great team, all of them together. Okay, so I just have one last thing. What do you have to say? What's the last thing you want to leave to the Chiefs fans? Go Chiefs! Go Chiefs! Go Chiefs! <laughs> go Chiefs. Yeah. I, I have to say, go Chiefs. Thank you, Stacey. I appreciate that yeah. this morning. Chanel, back to you. All right, Josh, thank you so much. Go Chiefs all across Columbia for sure. Well, the Eagles led the NFL in sacks this season, meaning that that Chiefs offensive line is going to have to play their best game so far to come out on top. I sat down with Fox 4's Harold Coots to break it all down. It's coming up after the break. Welcome back. Members of the media have heard from both the Eagles and the Chiefs all week long leading up to game day. So at this point, they know the ins and outs of what each team needs to do to come out on top tonight. Take a listen as I sat down with Fox 4's Harold Kuntz ahead of Super Bowl 57. What's the mindset going into Sunday? Just do they kind of feel like they still have something to prove even though they've already made it to the big game? 
Yeah, I think both teams have that mentality. The Eagles have the nobody likes us, we don't care mentality, but the Chiefs have the underdog mentality, even though the Eagles are known for having an underdog mentality. So it goes both ways. At this point, you're trying to find anything you can grasp at to give you a little bit of motivation. But both teams know this is going to be one and lost in the trenches. This comes down to how that Chiefs defensive line is able to get through that stout Eagles offensive line. And conversely, how the Eagles defensive line and how the Chiefs offensive line can help protect them. I mean, both sides know the or task at hand. Both sides know that this is the toughest challenge you're going to have all season. That Eagles defensive line, like you mentioned, um, has been top in the league, top in sacks. Just how important is the Chiefs offensive line all clicking in this game? Well, it's huge because if you remember a couple of years back when they were facing the Tampa Bay Buccaneers in the Super Bowl, I mean, this is the whole reason that new offensive line is there. They've spent nearly $100 million on this offensive line. Creed Humphrey's new, Trey Smith's new, Joe Tooney bringing in from New England new. Orlando Brown is, is there to protect uh, Patrick. And he's playing on the contract year where our franchise tag, where he has the most important job, actually caught up with Orlando Brown. And he said, like, look, my job is to come here and win the Super Bowl. And he might be the most important player here defending Hassan Reddick on the edge. So. It's going to be a difficult challenge, but it's one they have to step up for because this is the reason they were brought in. Switching to the other side of the ball, the Chiefs defense has held up pretty well in the playoffs. Um, just what do you think that they'll be able to do against the Eagles kind of to slow them down? Well, you know, the Eagles are first in the league in rushing. They averaged over 200 yards uh, rushing, which, you know, is really unheard of in the modern day NFL. But it's that RPO. I mean, let's talk about the Mizzou guy, Nick Bolton. And Willie Gay at linebacker. Sometimes they struggled a little bit tackling. Sometimes, I mean, Nick Bolton was one of the leading leaguers in tackles. But against teams that are kind of run heavy, sometimes they've had a bit of a struggle. So they've got to be under P's and Q's. They got to work under eyes. Steve Spagnuolo said he's been reaching back to some college coaches, including Urban Meyer, some from Alabama, Kentucky, on how to defend RPO. He's got to go back to the college books to make sure that they can cover that. So it's going to be an interesting challenge from the standpoint of it's something they don't see often. They see the concepts of it, but they don't see it often on the field. And it's how they read and react to everything and how the edge is set in order for them to have some success. There's been a lot of dynasty talk out there. Is a dynasty building? Is it not? Just where do you think we are in terms of dynasty if they get that second Super Bowl? If they get the second Super Bowl, yeah, they could be in discussion. But I talked to Rob Rodkowski and, you know, he played for the New England Patriots the last I checked. They want seven. So it's a little different situation when you want to start about talk about dynasties. I mean, we're, we're that's going to last like five, ten years. They redefine what dynasty is. So I would say the Chiefs are an AFC dynasty, but they're not quite an NFL dynasty. And yes, this will go a long way to being one if they win one, but they got to win. One. Well, looking back at everything we talked about, defense, offense, just in your opinion, what's the one thing that's going to make or break Kansas City in this game? Playoff games always come down to three things, turnovers, defense, and special teams. That's just really how simply it comes down to. Their special teams are clean. They keep the turn, they keep the ball and don't turn it over. Let's keep in mind, the Eagles turnover differential is one of the best in the league, and the Chiefs were one of the worst during the regular season. Now, it's been very clean during the two playoff games against Jacksonville and Cincinnati, so that's helped them. But they've got to continue to keep that clean because the Eagles are very opportunistic on turnovers, and the Chiefs give the ball away and give Jalen Hurts some time to operate and milk some of that clock away and score, then the Chiefs are going to be in trouble. So defense, turnovers, and special teams is always the keys to any postseason game. Well, ABC 17 sports director Natalie Jones has also been one of those media members there all week long talking to these teams. Natalie, most important question of the morning, just how's your coffee supply holding up? I'm going to be honest, Shell, it's not very good. I need to walk around and find, so there has to be something around here that I can walk to. got to get some coffee in the desert sun, though, all day. we got to get some water, too, so we'll mix that in. Well, it's the first Super Bowl Sunday of Mizzou alum Nick Bolton's career. Natalie, you actually got a chance to catch up with the former Tiger this week. How's he feeling ahead of this one? He's feeling really grateful, Chanel. You know, he's looking to actually be the third Tiger in a row to get a Super Bowl ring. Last year, tight end Kendall Blanton did it with the Rams. And the year before that, it was back backup quarterback Blaine Gabbert with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. We won't mention that one, though, because they did obviously beat the Chiefs. But no, Nick Bolton just keeps mentioning how grateful he is to be here. You know, long road for him. He really stepped into more of a leadership role this year, and he's grown into it a lot. You know, his teammates say he he's one of the best guys in that locker room. Well, one guy that's been here before, Patrick Mahomes, he had a lot of doubters ahead of this one. 
around just the season in general. Natalie, I think we've all learned to never count out Mahomes at this point. You can't. If you do, then you're doing the wrong thing, definitely. You know, and I think it shows with him winning that MVP. It really just showed all those doubters that, you know, be quiet. He knows how to play the game. He really hushed those doubters. And, you know, Jalen Hurts also has quite a few doubters too, Chanel, especially with that injury. Yeah, two weeks without Jalen Hurts was the Eagles. They took two of their three losses this season when he wasn't on the field. That just proves just how much of a playmaker he really is. We've seen him throw those bombs downfield, star receivers down there, but his legs is just really what sets him apart. It's going to be a tough one for the Chiefs defense and all around. Well, coming up after the break, we told you how this year's Super Bowl is historic in so many ways, but we aren't done just yet. After the break, we'll tell you what women will be on the big stage tonight in Arizona. Well, Natalie, as women in sports, I feel like we have to throw out some big moments for some strong women today in Super Bowl 57. Starting off, this will be the first year in Super Bowl history that an all-women team of pilots will do the flyover before the game. That's going to celebrate 50 years since women were allowed to become U.S. Navy pilots. Well, Chanel, also going into this game, Eagle Sports Performance Coach Autumn Lockwood will be the first black woman to coach in the big game, marking just the fourth woman to be a part of a team in the Super Bowl. We definitely can't forget about the halftime performance, Chanel. I definitely can't wait to watch some of that performance. Rihanna will be on the big stage performing the eighth woman to headline in the Super Bowl halftime performance. Natalie, big songs. I know we're excited. Desperado. We got to get Desperado in there. It's underrated. We're going to have a good game day, guys. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. You've been watching the ABC 17 Sports Zone Special Game Day in Arizona, presented by these fine sponsors.